Hi there, EA Tischler with New Horizons Golf. I want to talk to you a little bit more about the process of having a seamless routine and working yourself through your routine. So the first step of the routine is, you know, actually looking at your lie, assessing your lie, picking your target, noticing, you know, everything about the environment and the shot that you want to, uh, to bring into the, the moment so that you can make a good choice to play the type of shot that you want to play. Once you've made that choice, a committed choice, again, it needs to be clear and it needs to be committed, then you have to program what it is, what it is that you want to do. So in this instance, I have a ball that's sitting in a little bit of a divot. So I'm going to play a shot that I know is going to come out a little lower. I'm going to move a little back in my stance. And I'm going to call this a level two shot. So I've already made my choice. I'm going to play that level two shot. Now what I want to do is program that, that moment. What's it feel like? What's it look like? Where's my target? I want to have all that into my programming here. Now, everybody's a little bit different. Some people see the apex of their shot. Some people see the actual flag of the target. Some people see a target in the distance. Some people just pick a spot on the ground and they have that starting point that they're getting aligned to. So you got to understand when you're programming it, what works best for you. So, you know, when I actually get set up to program it, I don't take a rehearsal swing. For me, I can just imagine feeling that swing and what that swing feels like. A lot of students, a lot of players, they actually see the ball fly. They make a rehearsal swing. They also have a swing saying that's going to go along with that swing. So they're saying their swing saying as they're doing it. I also use what I call awing. So I go ah as I'm swinging. So the students that use the awing, they're going to put that into their programming as well. So you have to find out what works best for you in that pro programming department. But what you want to do is take that look out there, get that image strong, get that programming strong. If you need a rehearsal swing, take that rehearsal swing. Now you're committed and you're ready to go. Okay, right as I start walking up, from the programming zone up the ball, I call this crossing the bridge. You have a transition zone from the programming area up to the ball that I call the go zone. And as you cross that bridge, you have to cross that bridge without your conscious mind getting in the way of the swing. So a lot of people will just zone out, just enjoy the walk. You know, just be aware, enjoy the moment, take a walk across the bridge. Other people will occupy their conscious mind with a swing saying. Maybe they have a mantra for their, their swing. It's turn, turn, finish. So as they walk up to the ball, they just keep saying to themselves, turn, turn, finish, turn, turn, finish. They say it slow, smoothly, quietly, it gets quieter and quieter as they walk up there. Some people may pick a number. Maybe like my favorite number in football was 33. I could just say 33, 33, 33. Just something to occupy my conscious mind so I'm not thinking about golf as I go across that bridge. Again, we've got the programming, we're crossing the bridge. Okay, as soon as you cross the bridge and you're up at the ball location, there's another transition because you got to turn, you got to look at the ball, you got to get yourself situated. That transition gives you the opportunity again for your conscious mind to get in the way. Now, you can just keep saying the number or the mantra if that's what you're doing, or as you turn to look at the ball, you can just clear the slate, you know, tell yourself quiet mind, whatever that is, and just make sure that you take a look at the ball and the target just so you're getting situated and you're getting ready to just step in. Okay. Now once you've stepped in, if you're saying a mantra or you're saying your number, you can just keep saying it until you're completely situated and you're ready to settle in in that last moment before you trigger the swing. That last moment of settling in, we call the moment of pause. And everybody has a moment of pause. I go to center when I do it. Some people say they go to the quiet place. Some people say they take a step back. Some people say they zone out. Whatever your moment of pause is, you need to get into that moment of pause Again, totally quieting the mind, the conscious mind, so it does not get in the way of what's going to come next, which is that connecting, reconnecting, or revisiting, or just noticing the program that you have. There's a residual effect there. And then just reacting, going with it, and writing it out. And so once we get in there, and we have that moment of pause, You just go ahead and re react with the shot. And that shot came out just the way I wanted. It was in a divot. I caught it really flush. A nice lo lower level two shot for me. It went right down my corridor. So, you know, I'm trying to get through this whole process seamlessly. The key is, is that every step, getting done what's supposed to be accomplished, program the programming back there, clear choice.
committed choice. Rehearse it if you need to get the feel. You know, imagine it if you need to get the feel. See your ball flight, see your target. Understand what that programming is, get that programming done. As soon as you start walking up, cross that bridge. Enjoy the walk, zone out, do a count. You can do a countdown if you want it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. And if you feel like you're going to get to one before you're ready, then start counting back up. You know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's just, it's just a continuous process. It's keeping your mind out of it. Remember, those, those sayings or mantras or cues need to be very subtle, very faint, residual, kind of in the background. They're supporting actors. They don't want to overshine what's going on. And so each step, you're trying to make that seamless again without the conscious mind distracting you. You turn to face the ball. You got to get situated and settled in. Again, nice and calm and seamless. You take your moment of pause. And then when you come out of that moment of pause, the image will be there. You just notice it, reconnect to it, react to it is another way of saying it. Say your swing, sing, and go. Okay, now when we look at the cues or the swing sayings or the, the mantras, you need to realize that for some people, they're better off absorbing into the moment. And so, you know, that's a process of awareness of absorption. For some people, they're better off using it method of sort of detachment or distraction and that's distracting the cuts the conscious mind out of the activity so the subconscious mind what I like to call the inner golfer can direct the show and so you have to find out what works best for you sometimes it's a combination of both and so people that like to use numbers you know Sean uh, is going to be on one of the videos here he, his favorite number is 17 so he walks up to the ball he just says 17 17 17 17 17 17 quieting it down as he works his way in there you know again a lot of people just like to zone out and that works best for them some people like the countdown so those things are, are they're not concrete to the activity that you're doing they don't describe the activity that you're doing but they're there to help occupy the conscious mind so it does not grab on to anything hold on to anything and, and, and be so occupied by it that it distracts the rest of the activity or interrupts the activity, which is say. So you don't want your conscious mind grabbing onto something and making it more important than any part of the routine. It's more important to be seamless, to be in the flow, and to go through that whole process in the flow. And so again, whether you need something that seems to be detached from the activity, just a countdown or a number or your favorite number, and in your swing saying over the ball, it could be the same thing. It could just be two, one, three, four. You know, it could be five, four, four, three, it could just be something that seems to be meaningless, but it's actually you know, helping occupy the conscious mind in a way that it stays out of the actual process. And so that's an inner game where we just call that distracting self one. And so you want to get the conscious mind to a level where it understands that it is not directing the show and it needs to be on the couch, it needs to be on the sidelines, it needs to be on the bench. You give it something to do basically to appease it. And that swing saying is sort of appeasing the conscious mind so that the inner golfer, the subconscious mind, can actually direct the activity based on the program that you program back behind the ball. Okay, so let's do this one more time here. Yeah, so, you know, that time I felt very seamless. I, I got my programming, I crossed the bridge, I turned to look at the ball, I actually do a count there, I actually say to myself, one, two, one, two, three. That's actually occupying my conscious mind, you know, so that it stays out of it, it appeases my conscious mind when I'm over the ball. Then I take my moment of pause. When I come out of my moment of pause, I just see the image that I had programmed back behind the ball and I just react, my swing saying there was one, two. And so I have a lot of different types of swing sayings. My stock, partial shot, I say one, two. On a full swing, I say 1,000, one, 1,000, two. If I actually have a specialty shot, I want a low draw or something, I'll say cover, extend. I have little sayings that actually are a little bit more concrete. They're more 
They're, they relate to the shot that I'm going to play. And I need that for me because it's actually telling me I'm doing something different than my stock shot. However, I'm not thinking about how to do it. It's just a saying. For me, it's like a song and dance. It's very subtle. It's very quiet. It's just something for me to respond to. Let me go ahead and do one of those now. So this one I call a lever extend shot. It starts low, it climbs, and it literally falls a little bit to the right. So that one was really good. Right over, I picked the yellow flag out there, and that had a nice little lever stand. Fell off, you know, right over the target there. Landed nice and soft. So on a scale from one to ten, I'd say that was, you know, eight and a half to a nine right in there. It's better than eight and a half, but I won't give it a nine yet. So I've done it a long time. I, I kind of give it even in more distinct numbers. But I'll take that shot all day long. If I'm playing over late eight and eight all day long, I'm gonna play great golf. So learn your routine. Personalize it for yourself, learn how to make it seamless, and then notice when you're playing golf, your goal is to have as many seamless routines as possible. Not only to play good shots and have a certain score, but to execute as many seamless routines, seamless shots as possible. So, how many years ago did you learn to put all 12 voices on the couch? How long it took? No, I mean, when did we first start talking about it? Oh, shit. Five, six years ago. Eight. Okay. I'm trying to keep benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Eight years ago. Eight years ago. Eight years ago. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So you already understand that. Yes. So now that you're doing your programming. Yeah. You rehearse. Yeah. With my swing swing and off. With swing swing and off. You, yeah. you see the ball flight. Yeah. Now you've got the... You got the program done. Yeah. Okay, so now you're in a transition. You're crossing the bridge up to the ball location. For you, you just zone out as you cross the bridge, right? That's right. Then you step in. Yeah. You get situated. Yeah. You get settled. Yeah. You have your moment of pause, yeah. which is a quiet place for you. Yeah. Okay, when you come out a moment of pause, yeah. you're just reconnecting to the image. It's already there. Yeah. Right? It's subtle. It's quiet. Yeah. Right? And once you've rehab, revisited it, reconnected it, noticed, whatever you want to call it, yeah. you just react yeah. and you go with the awe and the swing saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, pretty good for standing there and us talking about it. So now, the transitions are really important. Crossing the bridge. For you, it's got to be very quiet. Just enjoying the walk, nothing's going on. Yeah. Zoning out, just like you do in your moment of pause, going to your quiet place. Yeah. Right? So when you turn and you look at the ball and you're getting settled, that's another transition. That needs to be quiet. So where is that at again? So again, you walked up there. You're, you just crossed the bridge, right? Yeah. Now you turned, you looked at the ball. Yeah. As you're getting settled, if you start consciously thinking, doing this right, that right, worrying about this or that, you just disrupted the process again during the transition. You're pretty good at that right now, but that happens every now and then, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So then you're in there, the process of getting settled, boom, 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 moment of pause. Yeah. When you come out a moment of pause, yeah. if there's any thought, distract, distraction, anything where the conscious mind grabs onto something and tries to, to make it more important than anything else in the whole routine, then you're out of the flow again, aren't you? Okay? So remember we, how long we've been talking about doing this whole routine seamlessly. Yeah, a long time. Yeah, eight years, eight years exactly. Yeah. So... The seamlessness has to be doing each step with the right level of focus or awareness or attention. Again, if you say a swing saying and you say 1001, 1002, you're over dramatic and you're over shining the rest of what's going on, it doesn't work, does it? No. It's so, a what of it. now it took you a bunch of years to be able to do swing saying and all. For the longest time, you could just do one or the other, yeah. right? Yeah. But now you can do both. And eventually those are going to become softer and quieter even. You'll notice on your best performances, they're very subtle. They're quiet. They're faint. They're kind of in the background. Again, supporting actors. Okay? 
So at some point they'll be soft enough that you actually be able to see the target or the ball flight or something like that while you're doing those things. Not yet. Okay, so let's get back here and let's execute your whole routine seamlessly. All the transitions, like when you look at the target and look at the ball, there's a transition there. There's an opportunity for thought to get in the way. That transition needs to be very quiet, very calm. For you, very empty, because zoning out, quiet place, those are the things that work for you. So all your transitions need to have a, a very quiet place feel to them. So scale from 1 to 10, how much in the flow were you? Okay, so very flowing. Now it wasn't right on target. Yeah. Because okay? you can't keep target in there and awe and swing saying. Now you could do target and awe. You can do swing saying and, and target. Yeah, you can go awe and swing saying. Those are your three choices right now. You see? Two or three. Yeah, what's your target? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I just, I just shot this straight out, so yeah. I. So yeah, that's why I kind of looked crazy. Well, but it, no, but it was, I mean, it still was right of your target. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Okay, let's start over again. Now you're actually behind the ball in line with the target. So scale from 1 to 10, how much in the flow were you that time? About 9 and a half. Yeah, and that's all over the target. So each transition, that you know, you, you do your rehearsal, and from rehearsal you actually kind of step back behind the ball and take a look. There's a transition there. That needs to be quiet. And then once you've taken that look and then you're going to start walking across the bridge, that needs to be quiet. For you, walking across the bridge needs to be empty. For you, very empty. Okay, then you get to the ball location, you turn, you look at the ball, now you're going to get situated. There's another transition there that has the opportunity of getting you in trouble. Okay, so again, it has to be quiet. You get situated, moment of pause, when you come out of it, it's just, there's a residual image there that you already programmed that you're going with. Again, some people don't see anything when I say image, they just feel it. It could be a raw feeling, it could be a raw image, it could be only the target. Everybody experiences that imagery in a different way. Okay, but whatever it is that you programmed, you just are revisiting, reconnecting, noticing, hey, you're still there. You know, whatever it is, without overshining the whole thing, you get it? And, and then you just react and go with it. And you ride it out all the way through the swing without any interruption, without any control, without out trying to make it, you know, the, the star. It's not trying to be the thing that is, it, that is important. So even the routine itself, you can't think, okay, if I just go through the process of routine, it's going to work. Because now the routine became more important than actually each step or phase or transition. There's sort of steps and transitions between the steps. You see that? Each of them just has to be done in their own right for their own purpose. Okay. Now, different people do it different ways. Some people have more an absorption process. They're trying to absorb themselves more and more into the present and the moment and just go with that you know some people need a detachment thing you know so you know you know for you zoning out is is sort of your detachment of your conscious mind from the moment so that your subconscious mind can just sort of enjoy the walk across the bridge you see that again two sides of the coin are you, is it, are you more trying to detach your conscious mind from the activity to allow the subconscious mind the inner golfer to do its deal or are you just absorbing yourself in the moment you know, with the inner process, so the inner golfer does its deal, and the conscious mind just go, fades back into the background. Okay, but at every level, when you're sinking in, it needs to feel like you know there is this sort of whatever the steps are are very fading away. They're not, they're not really like the important thing at the moment. You see that? Yeah. No, I see that. Just at the end, I said, oh, now I can force or focus on the swing thing right. as being the. Uh, the lead guy. Okay. Right. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Then mm -hmm. of course, well, you're not focused enough on the swing thing. So now here's the thing. What is focus for you 
You know, is focus mean you're concentrating, trying to make it be the thing? Or does it mean that you're just aware of it, you know, in a way where you can respond to it? It's being more aware. Yeah, so for you, really, focus means awareness. I mean, it's a tr in bowling and tennis, we've talked about that. It's not, it's not a concentration for you. It's just an it's awareness for aware you. So I just that it. level of awareness becomes important. If you're trying too hard, wanting too much, forcing anything controlling anything, then you're not aware. You're getting in the way of the awareness, right? You see that? So your process is sort of a combination. It's a hybrid, which a lot of people are, between the detachment and the awareness, the absorption. Okay? Okay, one more. So scale from one to ten, how seamless was that process? Another nine and a half. Yep. Again, all over the line of flight that time, wasn't it? Okay. So you can see how the more seamless you are, that we've talked about all this, these years about, you know, how much has the conscious mind stayed on the couch? Right. It doesn't mean there's no intent in there. It doesn't mean there's no inner workings going on. But it's the difference between thinking about it, concentrating on it and having the type of focus that allows you to transition from one part of the routine to another in a seamless manner without the conscious mind grabbing onto something and trying to make it the most important thing at the moment. It cannot, the conscious mind cannot grab on to anything in such a way that that thing overshadows the process of allowing the image, the programming, you know, to sink in, to go to the right part of the, the brain, to allow that inner golfer, that inner mind, to just tell the body how to do it. And you just have to write it out. You just have to go with it. Flow with it. That's so, why it feels like we're in the flow. The zone. So, can I control the awareness? No. You have to give up all control to be seamless. You have to allow yourself simply to flow through the routine, understanding the steps of the routine without letting any step overshadow the thing as a whole. The goal is to flow through it from beginning to end like riding a wave, you know, like surfing. You, you're riding it out. You just you got on the wave, you're on the board, now just ride it out without disrupting the flow of, of the process. All right? That's seamlessness. Okay, so we got your target. Okay? You picked your level of swings, uh, of shot you're stacking. Okay, now, let's talk about your stacking, how we have a swing saying with the stacking. So, one, two is your first level of stacking, yep. and two, three is your second level, and three, four is your third. Yeah. Makes sense that it just sounds like it's bigger, so it's just kind of subconscious, it's abstract for you, it's separate from describing the actual activity, but for you, you know, you understand that one gets bigger and bigger, so there's something in there that makes sense. Right. And you just, you just have to be happy with that. Right. Which is fine. Again, jelly donut, Cindy Crawford, one, two, two, three, three, four. It doesn't really matter, as long as it allows you to understand, you know, a way of keeping your conscious mind out of the process. Correct? Okay. So, do your programming. What do you do during your programming? We're gonna talk through it first, and then go through the routine a couple times. Okay. So you've chosen a level two. You've rehearsed a level two. Do you see the ball flight? Okay, so now what are you going to do? Uh, saying that 17. So 17's your favorite number, so as you're walking up the ball, you're just, again, you do good with a level of uh, uh, detachment distraction type thing, right, yes. or a way of doing it. Again, two sides of the coin, are you absorbing yourself in, or are you more distraction? More detaching distraction works for you with some set settling in and, and, and you, know, you know, getting into the moment through some, you know, absorption, right? Right. Okay, so... You know, as you cross the bridge, 17, 17, 17, it's quieter, quieter, quieter. Okay, then get up there. So now you've turned to face the ball. You know, you had a little transition there. That needs to be quiet. No interruptions, right? 
So you're getting situated, you're getting settled in. Okay, and what's your moment of pause? Right, put the club down. Okay, so you put the club down to find your moment of pause, and as you move the club behind the ball, you reconnect to the image. Again, it's there, it's a residual. You're just, it's, you're aware that it's there, noticing it's there. Hey, buddy, we're still together, whatever it is, but it's very faint again, right? Okay, so as you walk up doing your 17, 17, 17, at what point do you stop your 17? So right when the foot goes in. So, and it feels like it's softer the whole way you're going in there, right? Good. Okay, so even though we talked through that one, scale from 1 to 10, how seamless did the, the process feel to you? I'll say 7. I forgot to say 2, 3. Okay, there you go. So let's go back get back to it. So in every once in a while, that'll happen. Right. When you forget, you know, then something else gets in the way. Okay. Yeah, you can get lucky. 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 2, 3. So scale from 1 to 10, how seamless was that routine? I give it a 9. Okay, a 9. Is that the ball flight you saw? No, it was a little high. Okay, so a little higher, but all over the line of flight, wasn't it? That was great. Okay, so did something grab your attention that time? Did your conscious mind attach onto something? Did it want to play it lower or whatever? Okay. So again, scale from one to ten, how seamless was it? Eight and a half. Okay. So you, if the seamlessness is above a seven, seven and a half, you're still going to play good misses. Eights, eight and a half are still good shots. Nine, nine and a half, tens also obviously are great shots. So you have to notice at any point, and, and where do you tend to get, does your conscious mind tend to grab onto something? More in the steps or more in the transitions between the steps? Transitions. So right you, before I, right, before I, on the, right before I go. That's right. I want to do it right or something, right. or I want to do it good or whatever. So you got to be good at moment to pause, revisit, and go. I got to really got to focus on that. Not really same. focus, just know. Okay. Just wear it. Just go with it. Again, really focus on it for you becomes concentration. Oh, yeah, yeah. Concentration is too much thinking. It's too much in your. Yeah, it starts to overshine the whole process. Notice that, like we talked about it, throwing a ball in baseball. You already know where you're going to throw it because you know where the runners are. You know what right. the situation is. So when the ball comes to you, you catch it, and you revisit where you're supposed to throw it to because you, you know. And what do I mean by revisit? You're not reconnect, creating it. No. You're not forcing it. You're not telling, even telling yourself, yeah, remember, throw it there. See, that's conscious. That's, you know, an inner game. Self one, self two. You know, the self one getting in the way. You know where you need to throw it. You catch it. You've imagined it. You turn, you look, you throw. But it's a very reactive, responsive process. Not because the ball's moving, because you've been trained to know where to throw the ball in what situation. Right. So we're training you to know, you know, where, how to play, what you're playing, what your choices, what you're going with here. So again, once you come out a moment of pause and, and it's just, I reconnected, I revisited, I just noticed, hey buddy, go with it, that could be enough, you know. But you gotta then ride it all the way out to the finish. Even during the swing, we can something can get us. Great. So how seamless was that? Yeah, about ten. I mean, that's all over the flag, all over the line. What level was that? One, two, three, four. So you've done one, two, three, one, one, two, uh, uh, yeah, one, one, two, one, two, three, and one, three, four, mm -hmm. and those were great for you. Yeah. And so, like, when you walk up there and you turn, and then as you're looking at the target, you're still doing your 17s, aren't you? Yeah. And then you look back down, 
And then as soon as you touch that club, there's that, you know, moment of pause. And then you move the club forward, there's the revisit during the move the club forward. Right. I mean, that's a very quick, I move the club forward and I'm revisiting as I'm moving it forward. That's an instant. Right. And then you just go with whatever the trigger is. Now, do you see the shot in the, your mind's eye as you're doing the three, four, two, three? Oh, no, do you see the target? Do you see, see target. you see the target? You have the shot. The so target good. Program back here. Good. So when you're v revisiting, you know, you're you're allowing the program to run without thinking about one specific thing. You're going with your one, two, two, three, three, four, and during that moment, you still know where your target is. Right. You're not thinking target, target, target. I got to get on target. You just know where it is. Yes, exactly. Like throwing a ball. You know where the first baseman is when you catch the ball, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, so scale from one to ten, how seamless was it? Seven. So what got you that time? I didn't have a swing. I, didn't, I knew what level four, but I didn't really have like clear picture. Well, because you've mainly just trained level three levels in your stacking, haven't yeah. you? So that was a level four swing, but you haven't prepared yourself for a level four right. swing. So if you're gonna go level four, four five. Okay. Do it again. Would that make sense? Yeah. Again. It's, a, it's abstract, but it's concrete in the sense that it, it matches your stacking process. But it doesn't mean anything to the actual swing that you're making, you know, technique-wise, right? Yep. And, you know, abstract just means it's separate from the task at hand is one way of saying it. It's not descriptive of the task at hand. But in some of your swing sayings, you know, like your short game ones, clip, clip or something, that could be descriptive, but you're, you actually v view it or say it in an abstract way because you're not trying to be so precise with it. Right, 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 right. If you try to be precise with it, then it starts outshining the whole thing. You know, like putting. You know, what's your putting saying? Um, putt restore. You know, so, you know, that's more descriptive of what we're trying to do. Putt restore, back restore, you know. Putt is the action. Just make sure you have a good restore. But you're not thinking make sure you have a good restore. You're not controlling. Restore I it. Because that messes it up, right. you see. So... You know, if you can do it in a sense that you're detached from trying to make okay. it right, you're better. And, and that's what you do when you, you just made a freaking 50-footer on 18 for birdie. You saw it going in the hole. You said putt return, but you weren't thinking putt return. Wow. You weren't trying to make the return correct. That's what screws you up whenever you're trying to do things so perfectly. You know. That's that on the short ones. Yeah, that's right. On now, like, like Hogan, Hogan said when he stopped trying to do everything perfectly, and he just tried to do a few things well, he started winning championships. You don't need to do it per Your skills are good. You're, you know, you've won tournaments. Yeah. How many, there, a while back, we had you processing the routine seamlessly, and you kept getting into the final group in, in every tournament you played in for like a year, a year and a half, right? Mm -hmm. But you failed to close the door, because then on the final day, you tried to do everything perfectly to win. Right. Right. But you kept getting there. You know, and then you started closing out some tournaments, and you've won enough tournaments since. But even over this long period of years, it's been at least five years of me saying your technique's good enough, and you kept saying no, my stage three needs to be better. You've still won tournaments during those periods because you allowed yourself to process it during those periods, right? But the times when you thought your swing wasn't good enough and you needed to make it better, and you kept thinking about how to make it better, you messed up. Yeah, shot in the 80s. Yeah, and the same thing happens in putting. Or short game shots. You think too much about making the technique right. You know, and ultimately if you change your, your short game sayings, you know, part abstract, part, you know, feel, whatever because you're a feel player, so we know that. That's okay. But ultimately you gotta and that's why I've always said, when you play a good shot, if if there's something that you can describe that reminds you of what that experience was, then you just say that without trying to make it right. Okay? So let's do a four or five.
So scale from one to ten, how seamless was that routine? I give that ten. Yeah, I mean that was really good. Now, yeah. your level four tends to be more of a high push because right. your verticals get so strong that your corner isn't enough to, to match it right oh, now. Okay. That's just a tendency right now. But notice that your level four goes higher, straighter, with no wind further, you know, but it is down the right side of the corridor instead of the middle of the corridor. Mm -hmm. You see that? See, I, I would think that's a, a stage three issue. Yeah, there you go, but it's not. Well, I've, how many times have I demonstrated my stacking? Every time I go up to five levels, every level, you know, well, after level two, they go higher and more right, higher and more right, higher and more right. But I aim more left to play it at the same uh, target, yeah, so you yeah. think they're going at the same target. But I'm aiming more left to play that shot. You see? Mm -hmm. You just got to accept it. I mean, even the one before that was a 7, it, went high, it started higher and more right. And then right. it faded because it was a level 7, because right. you didn't smash it or release enough. Okay. You know? Because you got your four, your four actions. Smash, release slot right oh, tall yeah. through the ball and corner your body to the finish two lefts and two rights so you train your two lefts and your rights and funny thing is we're not thinking about them all you're no. using stacking right. as your method of play not technique as your method of play but four or five is all i need four or five is really my full swing yeah you don't you only need four levels scott only has three levels right and he's happy with three levels you know actually my first level is lower than your level one Correct. My fifth level is your fourth level. So I actually have a sh shorter level, not another bigger level. Mm. You see? So you got to own your process. And by own it, I don't mean concentrate so hard on it that you guarantee that you're going to do it. I mean, you just got to be so familiarized with going through the process, knowing what it is to have good transitions, quality transitions instead of disruptive transitions, knowing the purpose for each step and how you satisfy it for its own right not because you're trying to play a good shot you just do it and you just allow yourself to get into that flow as you do it yeah that seems way easier it is but that's what we all do when we play well right when you again kind of like jeremy we'll give him something like this and then he'll go over and do it what do you do we give it to you I mean, you have been seamless and in the flow many times over the last seven years but they, they, you only allow yourself to do it for short periods of time, and then you think you need to do it more perfect to get to the next level. Right. That's not true. If you stuck with it longer, instead of trying to make it more perfect, maybe it would just lock in more, you know, so to speak, it, on its own, not you locking it in. Okay, so we've got your target. Okay. So your swing saying? Swing, swing, swing slot, slot finish. Swing slot finish. Now, again, when you're doing swing slot finish, are you swinging, thinking about how to swing? No. Are you thinking about how to slot? No. Are you thinking about how to finish? No. Good. So for you, again. It's, it's more of a timing and a sequence. Yeah. I mean, we've described you as half awareness, half bubble boy. Yeah. Right? So the awareness person can have more so-called concrete swing sayings, you know. You know, the bubble boy, you know, if they understand its purpose can have them or they need the abstract. So, you know, the bubble boy, they're, they're more different because they, they tend to need to have everything in their place. So as you go through the routine, we want to find, are there things that are more abstract for you, more detached from the process? And are there ones that you can say that are relevant to the process? And being an engineer, there needs to be some relevance for you in that. You know what I mean? It makes sense to you, but you're an athlete, and you understand being an athlete, like playing basketball or what have you. Every time you thought about how to make a layup, you screwed it up. And every time you just imagined it, saw it, whatever, however you want to say it, and just wrote it out, flowed with it, it worked. So you already understand that. Okay, so we're going to program swing slot finish. You've got your target. Okay, so once you have the programming, you have to cross the bridge from there to there. Okay, now do you walk back behind the ball a little bit more to look at your target or, okay, there we go. So now you're just sort of finishing the programming and locking into your target. You're crossing the bridge. Now, what are you going to do as you're crossing the bridge? Well, when I cross the bridge, I just, I stop thinking 
mm -hmm. and I just clear it. You need to clear the slate. And not only that, it's kind of like I'm away from my body and I'm watching. There you go. So that's another thing people ask. Do you see it as you doing it from inside or do you see it as you doing it from outside? You see yourself crossing the bridge as an observer from the outside. Your conscious mind is actually almost back here, out of body experience, watching the athlete cross the bridge. The conscious mind is on the couch watching the guy on TV go across the bridge. And when I do it that way, it helps me because I'm not so focused on anything. That's right. I'm just I'm watching it and it's, it's very light, like you were saying. Very light, exactly. Very light. Yeah, pe some people say faint, some people say it's fading away, some people say light. Some of you say it's a residual. Everybody says it differently. It's very light for you. It has to have that light feel. Okay, now that's allowing the athlete, the inner athlete, the inner golfer, to start to absorb into this process because the conscious mind's already on the couch for you. Okay? So you're crossing the bridge. Very quiet, clean slate, crossing the bridge. Very light. You get to the ball location. Turn. Okay, so when does it... When does something kick in there again where it's not as light? When you're stepping into the ball, when you're looking at the target? Because then there's an opportunity there, that transition, where you could think, oh shit, I'm not lined up right, or do I have the right target, or you know, something can get you there. So what are you doing during that part of the process? So during that part of the process, I'm just I'm counting. Counting, okay. So what's the count? One B, two B, three B, four B, five Okay. That's your moment of pause on five. Good. So, okay, so you come out of moment of pause. And when you come out of moment of pause, you already have the image. You know where you're, and it's a target for you, right? And it's a target higher up behind, typically, in the distance, exactly. So, um, and by the way, you'll we'll have to check that with your wedge game and your putting. When, when full swings, that works great. And even in, in the short game, it can work good. But there's been studies that have shown once you have something that's no longer a full shot in the long game range, having a more specific target is important for a partial shot. We'll have to check that out some point. That's great. So you, it's funny. As soon as you have a moment of pause, you just naturally come out a moment of pause, just like getting ready for a free throw. Dribble, grab the ball, there's a moment of pause, look up and go sort of thing, right? So you come out of it, you see your target, and now you're into your swing saying. And what's your swing saying? Swing, slot, finish. So we're just reconnecting. Okay, good. Okay. So, scale from 1 to 10, how seamless was that routine? That was a 10. That's all over your th the gap. I mean, that's dead in the middle. That's a field goal in the gap in the trees. It was the gap in the trees left of the flags that was your target, and that was dead in the middle of the field goal. Awesome. That is processing. That's what I said, process golf. All these years, we keep saying process golf. We keep saying, it's funny, we talk about the steps. I almost believe, though, that people need to almost go struggle with it for a while on their own so that when we talk about it again and again and again, they can recognize how they handcuff themselves. They can recognize how they interrupt themselves. They can recognize how the conscious mind grabs onto something and starts making it, you know, the purpose for the moment instead of really flowing, staying in the flow and going all the way through the process without interruption. This is the real goal. Not any one particular part or moment or thing, right? And there can't be, even the program itself can't be overshadowing the rest of the, the stuff. It just needs to be there and it needs to be directing what's going on. Very like for you. Everything's very light. You are not being an actor, a dramatic actor, you know, swing, slot, finish, because sh shit, nothing else could get past it. It would be so disruptive. It's like, you know, an actor doing that on stage ruins the play because the actor's over -dr dramatizing becomes you know, more important than the play itself and the lines and the and the, the interaction between the characters right so you have to make the each transition again seamlessly very light knowing what you're doing as far as here's my program I go across the bridge clean slate 
I turn, I look at the ball, I'm doing my count. You know, one beat, and again, we know you're four beater. So one beat, two beat, three beat, four beat. That's putting you in your rhythm to, on the next one, which is five, hit your moment of pause. And there, everything else ends up coming off within the next four beats. You know what I mean? Because it's moment of pause, swing, saying go. And the swing is like three beats. So moment of pause, three beats is your next four cycle. Now you don't have to see it as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, but in reality, we've timed you, that's what's happening, right? And if you hold your finish after recoil, boom, and you do four more beats, the ball lands on four, okay? I mean, we've seen that before. And it's pretty neat when that happens. Of course, dead flat, no wind, it happens, right? Downwind into the wind, downhill, uphill, then that can change. But shows that something about this inner process we're going through, this rhythm, carries over into what's going on with the ball flight, quantum physics. It's all part of a whole. And it all has the same rhythm, the same cycle going on, the same cadence, because you're recycling, you know, a, a beat, you know, a pattern of beat. Pretty neat, though. Okay, let's do it again. See, Jack's on the couch over there. He's got all 12 of them inside, sitting on the couch with him, watching. So, scale from 1 to 10, how seamless was that routine? About an 8. And it's still, it's in the, it's in your field goal out there. It's just on the left pole. But, I mean, if eight's the worst one you ever had, that'd be great. Look, I stopped you. I talked to you. We had this interaction. You were listening, and you turned around, you went back into your routine, and you gave me an eight. Well, this is how we play golf. you got to be able to do it with me talking to you and distracting you in between. Right? Scale from 1 to 10, how seamless was that one? That was about a 9. That yeah. Nine yeah, absolutely. We'll draw it right down the, the corridor again, right? Yeah. Very nice. So again, understanding each step in the routine, understanding what each transition needs to be like for you, understanding at what level of lightness everything needs to happen for you so that it can all come together in a flow seamlessly and you're just riding it out. That's the process. That's processing golf in the flow.